three tips to help new insurance agents thrive their first year in the business. Number one, create a positive working environment. Number two, get 100% sold on your goals and why you want them. And then number three, invest time and money to get time and money later. I'm gonna cover all three of these right here in this video. Listen to this entire video. This is some monumental information here that's really, really gonna help you make it through your first year successfully. So let's get right into it. Number one, you have to create a positive working environment and usually that starts in your household. So you have to make sure that you have your work environment healthy. You may be on the road going face to face. You may be at home working over the phone like our agents here. We work 100% over the phone remote from home. So you want to make sure that especially if you are at home that you have a conversation with those around you and establish, hey, these this is what I want to accomplish here. It may be tough for me my first th few months. I may seem a little distracted. I may be very focused on this. It's going to re require a lot of time of mind, but I need your support. By the way, if you find value in this video, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. Hit that subscribe button because what it's going to do, it's going to show more people this content. It's going to help provide that same value that I'm giving you to other people. And also, if you have any questions about any of this stuff or any sales tips from me, just reach out to me at JVE at the JVE.com. That's JVE at the JVE.com. So you want to find what this will do, honestly, is you're really going to start to find who is truly committed to you in your life and who wants your success. You're going to have people telling you to get a real job. You're going to have people telling you to slow down if you're working a lot. You're going to have people telling you that money isn't everything. You're going to have people telling you all these different things that uh, may pull you and, and drive to kind of pull you away from your business and pull you away from accomplishing your goals. But this is what I would say to them, the people that I live with, is look, I really want to be successful at this. And I wanna let you know that I may struggle a bit for this first year. Can you give me your unconditional love and support for the next 12 months, regardless of whatever goes on? Can you support me and push me even when I get down and I get discouraged? Can you push me through those tough times, can you be that rock for me and that support for me that I need to do the little things every day in order to have huge success in this business? Will you be here or will you stick by me for this? And this is gonna really help you identify who supports you in your home because sometimes the people that are closest to us on a daily basis are actually detracting from our progress and our success. I've had it happen to me several times throughout my life and usually what happens is people people give up on their own goals. People give up on the idea that they are going to be very successful. They give up on the idea that they can, they can do very well in life. And they want to try to convince you to give up on your goals too. I've never met a single person ever who's doing better than me, who tells me to slow down or that I'm working too much or tells me that my goals are too big or tells me that money isn't everything. <laughs> I've never, ever, ever had a single person who's more successful than me tell me that stuff. So if you have people in your environment telling you that stuff, you have to either handle it and say, look, knock that off, or you have to adjust and, and maybe even remove those people from your environment. It can be hard sometimes, but this is something that you need to do to create a positive environment. Try to also cut out friends and family members who are negative or are consistently like gossipy or just kind of have given up on their own dreams and goals because your network does equal your net worth at some point. All right. So you're in, in the people that you hang around, you're going to gonna end up picking up their tendencies. So you want to be lifted up in the group and hang around people doing better than you instead of having to lift everyone else up all the time. Also, the environment that you're in can be pretty stimulating. So you may have had traumatic experiences or just kind of bad thoughts or, or bad, bad things go on in some of your environment. So to kind of eliminate the subconscious effect of that, you can change your environment, maybe rearrange things in your office or rearrange things in your home, put like new posters up and stuff like that that can help you be more positive. Now, although your external environment is important, the most important environment that you're going to run into in your that you're going to have to work on in your first year in the business is your internal environment up here. It's it's in your mental. Now, 
where I started working, I was in a second, my second bedroom. It was pretty much empty except for a picnic table to dial off of and a computer. So it wasn't like decorated. It wasn't super pretty. It wasn't like this, this happy, happy hoorah environment, which I do have now, as you can see from like my, some posters I have back here. And in front of me, I have like my anime shows I like, and I have a whiteboard that I draw inspirational stuff on. So I have stuff in the office now, but when I started, I didn't have the money for that stuff. And, and that wasn't really important to me. But what really, really helped me is working on my internal environment and making sure that Justin was okay with Justin and that I was comfortable every day and excited and motivated and woke up pumped. So what I recommend that you do to improve your internal environment is number one, read books. So read books that are designed to help you boost your mindset, get focused and kind of change your thinking and help you think bigger and help you be future focused. So a couple authors that are really good, uh, Grant Cardone has a lot of excellent books, excellent personal development books. Also, we have John Maxwell. He has a lot of amazing leadership books, which I'm really getting into now as I progress into leadership. Roger Seep, that's S-I-E-P or S-E-I-P, I forget how you pronounce his last name. I mean, how you spell it, but he has a couple good books on how to kind of train your brain to be successful. Actually, one of his books is called Train Your Brain for Success. It's an awesome book. And then also um, Napoleon Hill, uh, think and Grow Rich. It's like the best book I've ever read in my life, literally. You guys have to read that book. So all of these books can really, really help you. Now, what I do is, and sometimes it's hard to get reading in, so I listen to a lot of audiobooks. Now, I listen to uh, audiobooks in the morning for a half hour or maybe even longer. So when I wake up, I, and this is something that you guys can do, right? You wake up, write down your goals, and then immediately put an audiobook on your phone. If you have other people in your home, put your headphones in and just listen to it. And then I take my phone, I bring it in the shower. So I'm, I wake up, I make my coffee, I'm doing all this stuff. I take my phone into the shower, I turn it on speaker, I turn up the volume, and then I listen to the audiobook while I'm in the shower. And then I take, cut, get out of the shower, I keep it playing, and then I get in my car and drive to the gym and it's playing on the Bluetooth. So for like the first you know sit block of my morning, all I'm listening to is positive stuff coming into my brain that helps me get focused and learn. And I'm putting positive information in. So when you have this positive information coming in and positive stuff, positive influences, it kind of helps clear the bad stuff out too sometimes. So you want to you think, think of it like this. Like, do you want to be putting, do you, if, if, you had a bunch of tra if you had a bunch of trash and rotting food, would you just throw it around your bedroom and just throw it around your room? Would you let people bring trash over your house? If they said, hey, dude, I'm going to come over and just like bring some like rotting meat. I'm just going to leave it there. That cool. I'll just throw it on your couch. You cool with that? Just like no, no plastic. Just throw the rotting steak right on your couch. You cool with that? You're cool with that, right? You're like, uh, no. So the, you got to treat negativity the same way that you would treat rotting garbage because that's what it is. It is garbage. Negativity, negative influences are garbage. Social media can be very, very negative. YouTube is actually, I think, the most positive outlet for social media that there is because you're not like, you, it's not like you have zero choice but to see this nonsense content that's out there on like Facebook and Instagram, stuff like that. So you want to, you, you filter that stuff out. So make those decisions, okay? Another thing that you, in, in reading books and listening to those positive things can help you fill your brain with all this good stuff all through the day and it increases your mood and keeps you more focused and creative and, and more energized. Another thing that, uh, that I like to read are, are novels, like sci-fi novels and fantasy novels. I think they're really cool. Like, I don't know, I'm into them and they just help me be excited and also at night on the weekend, sometimes I play video games and that's really fun for me. And it puts positivity into my life and into my environment because it's fun. It's exciting, kind of pulls me out of my head for a little bit. So those are all things that you can do to increase a positive mental environment. Also, personal development courses. So personal development courses are huge. I took one through Cardone University. I've done personal development through books. I've done personal development courses through like, just like generating them on my own and saying, hey, this is like my path that I'm gonna go on to develop myself and I'm gonna read and do this. 
So personal development courses are a huge thing to invest in. And then um, also, like I said, you can have fun and cool things in your workspace, like inspirational sticky notes and posters and, and things that you hang up and banners and stuff like that. So you want to make sure, number one, that you're creating a positive environment. And, and uh, one thing that really, really helped me get through my first year was changing, uh, was finding the people that were going to change my life. So when I first got into the business, I, I had friends that were successful, but I didn't have any friends that were like mega successful. Okay, so going to business networking events, um, pay to play stuff, like like you pay to be to go to a business event and then you're involved in a Facebook group, those changed my life. Like literally changed my life because they connected me with the people who connected me with resources that help are gonna help me reach my potential faster. Okay, so the, and those people, they think bigger. And it's really cool because all the crazy things that you may have on your mind about your people, other people call you crazy. Like you get people that you always talk about work. You always talk about money. You always talk about trying to be successful. Let's just talk about something else. Can we not talk about that right now? I've never had any of these mega successful people ever, ever say that to me. That like never, ever. Hey, can we just not talk about work? No, I haven't. So you're, you want to ha- you want to connect with people that are as passionate about success and results as you are. People who encourage you, people who like seeing you win, people who want to see you win, people who when they you see them see other people win, they're commending them. They're not like discrediting their results and their success. So you 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 sometimes you have to pay to do that. It's not an expense. It's an investment. Okay, so a couple, one thing you have to change about changing your environment, you're investing in your environment and you're investing in your space. So what that means is you're gonna get a return on that investment at some point. Now, I'm more confident investing in myself than anything else because I know I'm confident in my ability to produce results and you guys wanna think the same way in your first year in insurance. You wanna be thinking, hey, how can I invest in improving myself as much as possible? Because looking back, I didn't need all these magical sales tips. I needed personal development on how I can stay goal focused and consistent and put in those actions every single day, push, bang, shove till the doors break and put up with the rejection, put up with the resistance, put up with the BS that you run into every single day, having a positive environment, positive people in your life and creating a positive mental environment are invaluable. They're priceless. And you have to do this if you want to succeed in your first year in insurance. I have never met a grouchy, grumpy, depressed, sad agent who's made it. Now, a positive environment results in these things, results in enhanced creativity and innovation. So when you're more excited, you kind of think outside the box. You become more committed. And after you commit to something, your creativity and innovation follows. So you may have new ideas for for how to make a better system for your sales. You may have better ideas for how to on, on a sales presentation, you may get more creative. Um, you're more you're more excited when you go meet your clients. You're more excited when you go talk to your clients. No one wants to talk to a grouchy, negative, sad, depressed person. <laughs> like they just don't. So creating this positive environment is going to help you make more sales because people are going to be like, man, there's something about this person. They're like glowing. You know what I'm talking about? Someone steps in a room and they're really excited and you're like, man, there's something about this person. I don't know what it is, but they get me pumped up. And you want to be that person. You want to be that person that shines a bright light. And then also you're going to attract other people to follow you in your business and help grow and scale if you're excited and positive. You you, you really can't make it too far in leadership if you're grouchy and, and mean and Yes, you have to be direct with people, but it's it's a big, big hindrance if you're not able to create a positive environment and a positive work environment. So another thing that enhanced positivity does is it creates a higher persistence towards your goals because you are not as susceptible to downward forces in your environment. So what I mean by that is, is someone who's super enthusiastic and excited all the time, they don't look at um, falling down as failing. They look at it, hey, I fall down, I get back up. This is part of the process, right? I make mistakes, I learn, and I grow. I see some people who aren't positive, people who are sad or depressed or, or angry or apathetic, which means they just don't care, or nervous. Things happen to them, negative things happen to them, and it completely crushes their day. It completely crush, It can crush their week. They lose a sale, a sale falls off the books, and they're not even focused on all the ones that stayed. They're focused on the one that they lost. So, being but being positive, what it does is, is it helps you take responsibility, right? You can't take responsibility unless you're excited and enthusiastic. And you have to create an environment that fosters that 
in order for you to create a responsibility because people who have those negative emotions, they're victims. And when you're a victim, you relinquish your control and your ability to have control over your, your success. So victim mentality results from those negative activities. So when it, you know, being positive will help you have a persistence towards your goals and be relentless in making sure that they happen. So this is key, guys. If you do not create a positive environment mentally and exter- internally and externally in your life in insurance, you will fail. If at least mentally, some of us live in an environment that sucks and I get it, but you have to create it here. If you do not create a positive environment here, you will not make it in your first year. You just won't. It's just impossible. Like it really, really is. You're going to have better consistency. You're also going to have better communication because you're going to be more excited to talk to people. Like I said, people are going to want to send communication your way as well. They're going to be more trusting. They're going to be more, more willing to defer to you. Okay, because people want to talk to happy, excited people. So when you display that, people are going to be way more likely to to want to talk to you and gravitate to you. And then also you're more you're you're more healthy. Like it's proven that excited, enthusiastic people have less diseases. They're over to overcome. They're able to overcome sickness and disease better. They take less medication. They have they're typically in better shape, right? Their 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 fitness and, and muscle tone is better. Their skin looks better. They're just uh, 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 it, there is a tie and a correlation between the health of your spirit and the health of your body. So nurture your spirit. Another thing you can do that I totally didn't even focus on is re- is religious stuff. Like if you're a religious person and you're into spirituality, then uh, you know be more participating in that. I've seen. People get committed to their religion or their denomination and, and just like, you know, honestly, it's, it's funny to say, but most of the people that I see who do very, very well in this business are very religious or very spiritual. And the people who push through are very, very spirit. And that's not just in business. That's like life in general. I've seen, I see a lot of successful people that are very, very passionate about their religion or their, their, what they practice for spirituality. And there's 100% a correlation between that, uh, between someone's spiritual well-being and their, their physical and mental well-being. And it helps you not get burnt out, right? Because you inside, what makes you is an energy machine. Like you, you think about it, like the inner essence of you cannot get tired. It's your physical body that gets tired and sometimes your mental, but what's deep down in your core can't get tired. So you gotta wanna harness that and create it positive. Now this ties into the next thing and being positive to get 100% sold on your goals and why you want them. So you have to understand what you want, but also why you want it. See, I write down all my goals every day and then I put why I want it. I wanna retire my dad, I wanna travel the world, I wanna change the world, and I wanna provide to others and then help recovering addicts because at one point in my life, I had a really bad substance abuse issue. So I wanna help people like that. I want to have a positive impact on the lives of my friends and family. I wanna be able to give to them and I wanna see them flourish because of what I do now and I wanna help my future children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren for generations to come uh, be, I wanna change the world, literally. And, uh, and, and I'm so sold on that. Like it's right now it's Saturday at 6 a.m. Well, it's six, probably six, yeah, six thirty. Saturday at six thirty, um, and I am, um, I'm super pumped to, uh, to, to, to be here working and, and making this video. So I'm sold on my goals and why I want it. Now, you want to what, what I had to adopt, and you guys want to, you guys have to adopt this in your first year, and you have to communicate this to the other people in your life that if you are not one hundred percent giving it all to accomplish your goals then you are being unethical to yourself. You are robbing yourself and you're robbing your friends and family of money. Like the most insidious form of stealing. Insidious means like hidden, right? And kind of hidden in there. The most insidious form of stealing is not giving it 100%. You are stealing from yourself. So if you're coming into this saying, I'm going to do part-time, you're robbing yourself. You're being unethical. You really are. You are, you're being unethical and you have to face that and confront that. You can call me crazy. I'll call you lazy. That just is what it is. Goals. When you set your goals, you want to have them be specific and be time-based. So not just like, I want to make more money 
but I want to have more agents on my team, but you got to be like, I want to make this much money. I want to have this many people in my downline. I want to work out this many times a week. I want to eat this many meals a day. I want to read this many books in this period of time. So you want to set your goals finite and time-based. And what I would try to do is take like a six-month goal and try to do it in three months. Give yourself a three-month deadline to do it. Now, what that does is it gives you more to do in a shorter amount of time so that you'll be more likely to accomplish those goals. And I promise you, if you can write down your goals every single day, and then set targets daily to accomplish those goals and follow through on that, you will, in six months, you won't even recognize the person that you become. And this is stuff we're not taught to do in school because the education system is just absolutely garbage. So like what you want in a certain amount of time, then every day you want to have your day mapped out. Like I have to make this many phone calls. I have to talk to this many people. I have to watch this, this much time of training videos. I have to run this many appointments if you're face to face. Guys, this is what it's going to take to be successful in your first year. But it's really not that hard. It's a habit that you build. And once you start getting goal focused, you're going to see, man, you just start to change. Like you, when you start accomplishing these things in your life, you're going to love it. You're going to love the person that you become. I promise. You're going to love the way you look. I guarantee it. <laughs> so the difference between a goal and a target, a goal is like, I want to make $65,000 in this amount of time. A target is, hey, what actions do I have to take to get to that goal? Okay, so a target's like, I have to make 100 phone calls today. That's a target. The goal is the amount of money that you wanna make. The target is what you have to make for phone calls. So uh, also you wanna write down your goals every single day. So I wake up, I write them down, and then I, so sometimes I write them right when I wake up, I have to start doing that. And then I'll definitely write them when I get to the office, and then I write them again and focus on them before uh, I leave the office or before I go to bed. Because what it does is it keeps my, it's like a little mental reset because there's all these forces that try to pull you all these different directions throughout the day. But when you have those goals that are constantly on your mind, the, the stuff that stays on your mind eventually expresses itself in a physical outward reality. So in your first year in insurance, if you are like always discouraged or sad or angry, oh, all this bad stuff happens to me, I'm such a victim, the world hates me, blah, 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 blah. Why am I, why is it so hard for me? Then you know what? It's going to be hard for you. And the world is going to be an unforgiving place. And you're going to have all this bad stuff happen to you because you just, you, you call that into your environment. But when you're focused on your goals and all you think of is accomplishing things and not failing, and all you think of is, hey, this is what I'm going to do, you start to change. And you start to change in a way that these things start to manifest themselves physically. Every single monster accomplisher out there, they think big. And that's all they think about. They are obsessed with massive results and massive success. So you guys have to get committed to that and focused on that. Now, you need to actually visualize your goals. So when you say like, if I say I want to make $65,000 in the next couple months, I want to actually see that much in deposits in my account. Well, I actually want to make 65000 a month. So if I, in, in net profit. So if I see that at the end, like, Take what I, what I would like to do is what I'd recommend you to do. And I do this is take a bank statement, print it out, doctor the numbers so that you can see that like net change of $65,000 or $10,000 or $4,000, whatever it is. So that you're like, boom, this is what a bank statement is going to look like. Like you're like really like forcing it to happen. Like you're like, yo, this already happened. And you want to think of it that way. So visualize if you want to buy a new house. Like find the house you want online and what it looks like and buy that. If you want to invest in real estate, find what the property looks like and do that. If you're like, I want to be, I want to be like this percent body fat, find what someone looks like at that percent body fat and be like, damn, I'm going to look like that. Like take your head and Photoshop it on their body <laughs> and be like, this is what I'm going to look like. You want to have the visual and set because the visual stuff is super stimulating internally and gets you like super excited. Writing down your goals in the morning and at night, what it helps you do too, it helps keep your environment positive because all those negative things that want to seep in throughout the day, you know, like the news and maybe like your neighbor or maybe even someone you live with heckling you or just being like negative. Refocusing on your goals and getting recentered helps you like kind of flip that switch, push those things out of the way so that you can remain positive. And then go having goals keeps you future focused. It keeps you focused in the grounded in the present. We're like, but in the sense that you're going to take present moment actions to create a stronger future. It's not just like, I'm going to live in the present forever. Like, yeah, it's cool to be like the monks that do that and stuff, but they're broke and they have like lice crawling in their hair and they have fleas and like they probably stink and like, right. So like, do you really want to be like that? I don't know. I want to be do, very successful and happy and just doing what I want and accomplishing goals and producing results. 
that's just me. I don't know about you, but I feel like, you know, it's more than just like living in the present. Like, okay, I'm here now. Where am I going? <laughs> that's how I feel about like that. So uh, you want to you be focused and grounded, but in the sense of, hey, you're taking actions every day to c- produce results for yourself in the future. And then lastly, what I want to talk about is investing your time and money. In your first year in insurance, you have to invest time and you have to invest money. I don't care what system you're in. Even if you're in somewhere that they pay for all your leads and all your licensing and everything else, you have to invest in yourself. You have to invest in your time. Or you have to invest your time. You have to invest money. Now, for my first year, what it looked like was just like maxing out all my credit cards on leads, personal development and courses, uh, helping other people get into the business so that I could grow a team. So there were a lot of different things that I did in my first year and that I invested in to grow and expand. Uh, and what all those t- and also I worked like seventy hours a week. So what di- what that did is it allowed me later on to have more time and more money. This business, you can literally invest your money in leads or growth and you get back more. It's like right away. It's insane. Like if you're buying direct mail leads and you go and knock on all the doors of those leads, it is literally like impossible not to sell insurance if you just go to a door with a smile and read the freaking script that your upline gives you. Like it's literally like impossible. If you are on in telesales and you're provided leads, if you sit there and dial leads all day and read the script that you're provided pretty much word for word, it's almost impossible not to make a sale and if you follow training. So you're gonna invest time, okay? But invest money in pers- in sales courses. Cardone University, you can reach out to me for my telesales course. Um, also, if you look up right here, you're gonna see how to, uh, actually, no, I'm not gonna put anything there because this is a new type of video that I'm doing, sorry. Uh, but if you did like this video so far, please like it, subscribe to my channel, reach out to me at jve at djve.com. I'd be more than happy to help you with anything that you need. Um, and, and so there's things you want to invest in. Invest in a mentor, invest in a coach, invest in some consulting, invest in your growth. Uh, you want to put money in. Things I invested in my first year, Cardone University. Grant Cardone Business Networking Events, Business Network International, uh, Jordan Belfort Sales Course, Building My Own Sales Course, Hiring Other People, Paying for other people's insurance licensing that were my friends so that they could get going with me and family members. Uh, Buying leads for them so that they could get started in the business. Buying office equipment and computers and all this stuff. I did not have the money, guys. I didn't have the money. I put it on a credit card. I was in like tens of thousands of dollars of credit card debt at the end of my first year in insurance. It's because I invested all this money and I wasn't scared to do it. Why? Well, I told you a little bit about my past before. So for me, it was like, what's the worst that can happen? And I knew that for me to be successful, I was going to take the chance. I had to take a risk. It was like, am I going to live for the rest of my life wondering what it, where I could be if I just took a little chance? Or am I going to listen to everyone in my life, family, friends, even parents who said, oh, be safe, take the easy way out, do this. But then I look and it's not even the easy way out, right? Like taking the easy way out, guys, is not the way to win in insurance. You're going to have people who invest time and money blow past you because you can buy leads and sell them right away. You can, and, and if you go to build an agency, your investment comes a few months down the road, right? Because you have to recruit and then they get licensed and then you train and all this stuff. So it's a couple months down the road that your return comes. But it's literally like the more you put in, the more you get out. And you want to invest in yourself first. So your own personal development first, okay? Like I said, sales courses, personal development courses, coaches, reading. Make sure your coach has the results that you want to achieve though. Don't take advice from people who haven't achieved what you are trying to accomplish. Um, You can invest in in audiobooks. You can invest in office equipment leads. So investing in yourself, number one, because you're going to give yourself the greatest return, not crypto or stocks or any of that stuff. Number two, invest in other people. Okay, invest in other people, helping them grow. And then three, invest in those other assets uh, that I just, you know, referenced there. So um, that's really, uh, those three things are going to help you uh, push through and thrive in your first year in insurance. So number one, like I said, we have creating a positive working environment. Number two, you want to get 100% committed to your goals and why you want to accomplish them. Don't focus on how you're going to do it. Focus more on why you want them and then it's going to make the how happen anyway. And then number three, you have to invest time and you have to invest money. I would recommend working at least like 70 hours. I mean, I would recommend 70 hours, but at a bare minimum of 50 hours a week, your first year in insurance. And then once you build that habit, you're going to see the results come and you're just going to be able to move on and, and push through that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like the video, subscribe to my channel, throw a comment down there, email me if you have any questions. And uh, yeah, stay tuned to my channel.